Kia ora tato. another story. This time it's called Nesta and the Missing Zero. It's written by Julie Liebrick and Ross Kennard and it's a scholastic book. It's missing, cried Mr Abacus. I've definitely lost it. What's he lost? Lost what? shouted Nesta through the window. Nothing, he bellowed. I've lost nothing. Nesta frowned. But you said you lost something. I mean, I've lost zero, he replied with a sigh. Oh, what a naughty number. The number naught must be to run away from home like this and not come back to me. He looks a bit distressed about this. I wonder if we can help him. Is zero important? asked Nesta. Oh, it's important if you're a number, said Mr. Abacus. Add it and you'll stay the same. Subtract it, you're still you. I can't divide. Oh, but multiply and you'll disappear from view. A zip, a zilt, a zero, a nothing and a naught. An itsy bitsy circle that can't be found or caught. I wonder what they're going to do if they've lost it. Zero must be a very odd number, mused Nesta. It's not odd, it's even, barked Mr Abacus. But enough of this nonsense, we have to find it. He snatched up his coat and led the way, straight up the garden path. Out of the gate they went, like a rush of sparrows in spring. Out into the world, where there was, do you know what I've just spied? An ellipsis, with three dots in a row. That means there's something else coming. I wonder what that is. Are you ready? Chaos! Zero had disappeared from the face of the earth. Cars crawled along roads, clocks went crazy and chimed one o'clock instead of ten. People missed trains and caught wrong buses. Letters were delivered to 23 Main Street instead of 203 Main Street. Oh look, there's no zero. That's a bit weird. Computers crashed, phones stopped ringing. The bank had to close when one billion dollars became one dollar. Oh gosh, that's a bit sad. People on the street wept and shouted, We want nothing! We want nothing! Oh, don't worry, cried Nesta. We're number hunters. We'll find it. I hope you're a number hunter too. Nesta and Mr Abacus searched all day. They saw several somethings. They saw many anythings. They even saw everything. But they never saw nothing. Eventually the sky was so dark that they had to trudge home. Nothing was nowhere. Nothing seemed gone forever. Once inside, they collapsed on the couch. Nesta said, I'm fed up with looking for nothing. Maybe it isn't real. Maybe nothing doesn't exist. Oh, oh, what terrible words. Mr Abacus clutched his heart. The jars and the kitchen shook and all the numbers turned to pink with shame. Then they became a frenzy of pushing, tumbling and squeaking. Zero is our hero. Zero is our hero. Nesta squirmed. But zero has no value. It's a blank. It doesn't count. At that, the glass jar shattered. A whirlwind of numbers whizzed around the walls and rattled the doors and windows. Nothing does count, bellowed Mr Abacus. It's a lovely round number. The most important number of all. Without it, the other numbers don't make sense. Without nothing, Nesta, when you are nine, you'll be one on your next birthday. Oh, I hadn't thought of that, she whispered. Mr Abacus shouted into the whirling air. We really need you, Zero. We love our quirky sot. Without you, all is chaos. You show us what we've got. Nesta's small voice tugged at Mr Abacus's ear. Do you think, perhaps, maybe, Zero would come 
come back if I said I believed in nothing? Try it, urged Mr. Abacus. The flying numbers rustled and jostled before settling on the shelves to listen. Try it, Nesta. Try, try, try. Nesta looked around the room. She thought something be awaiting. And she was sure the something was nothing. She called out. I believe in you, Zero. Yes, I believe in nothing. Outside, the world echoed. Yes, suddenly everything made sense again. Road signs were right, trains were on time, people knew which bus to take, and everything went like clockwork. Oh, the world was back to normal. You see the big yes in the clouds? It's very clever. In the mathematician's house, the numbers settled down happily with their beautiful zero in a brand new number jar. Oh my, I have to say, it looks spectacular. Mr. Abacus made mugs of hot cocoa while Nesta looked out the window and counted her blessings. It seemed that every blessing had several noughts added to it. I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. Kaikite.